Hello, my name is Iftikhar Kalu. I'm a professor in the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine at Mayo Clinic Rochester, and I'm delighted to present to you an overview of familial hypercholesterolemia. Familial hypercholesterolemia is an autosomal dominant genetic disorder, as is evident from this pedigree of a family with FH. Nearly 50% uh, of uh, first degree relatives are typically affected. FH shows locus heterogeneity, which means that more than one gene is implicated. There is allelic heterogeneity, which means that many genetic variants in each gene can cause the disease. And typically, FH is penetrant, meaning most patients who have a pathogenic variant will have high LDL levels, but not all patients may get coronary heart disease. This cartoon illustrates LDL metabolism and the variants uh, in these three genes that can lead to FH. Typically, LDL particles are taken up by the LDL receptor on a hepatocyte and then processed within the hepatocyte with uh, degradation uh, and then release of uh, free cholesterol. And then the, re the receptor itself is recycled back to the hepatocyte surface where it can again act to accept LDL particles. If there is a pathogenic variant in LDLR receptor, it may not function, and as a result, LDL particles increase in concentration in the serum and manifest as hypercholesterolemia. Similar effect is observed when there's a defect in the apolipoprotein B, which carries LDL cholesterol, and such variants may impair the ability of the apoprotein B to bind to LDL receptor, uh, resulting in elevated LDL cholesterol. Now, these are both loss of function variants, but there's an interesting gain of function variant in PCSK9 that can lead to familial hypercholesterolemia. Now, PCSK9 binds to the LDL receptor and then targets it for degradation in the endosome lysosome complexes. And as a result, the receptor cannot shuttle back, as seen here, to the hepatocyte surface resulting in decreased number of LDL receptors and, as a result, elevated LDL cholesterol. Now, most cases of FH are due to pathogenic variant in LDLR, up to 80 percent. 10 to 15 percent may be due to uh, a variant in apolipoprotein B, and 3 to 5 percent are due to a gain-of-function variants in PCSK9. Now, many ask the question, if the patient has high cholesterol, why do I need to do genetic testing? Because I can simply treat the high cholesterol. But there are two main reasons to do genetic testing for FH. First being, it does confirm the uh, diagnosis, and it provides risk information. In this study, individuals who had similar uh, levels of cholesterol uh, binned here as greater than 160, greater than 190, or greater than 220, you can see that the individuals uh, that had a pathogenic variant shown in red had much higher risk than individuals that had similar levels of cholesterol but did not have the pathogenic variant. And this is likely because individuals with a monogenic form of FH will have been exposed to high levels of LDL cholesterol from birth. The second reason to do genetic testing is that it facilitates cascade testing. So in a pedigree, if the proband is identified to have a pathogenic variant, then testing siblings or offspring becomes easier because LDL cholesterol levels may not always be reliable in such settings. Now, prevalence of FH is relatively high for a genetic disorder. It's estimated that one in 250 individuals have a monogenic form of FH, and as a result, there are 1.3 million estimated FH patients in the U.S. Unfortunately, only 10% of these are estimated to have a diagnosis of FH, and that means 90% are without this diagnosis and potentially not treated. Even among those who are diagnosed, only 50% might be on a high-intensity statin, a missed opportunity for treatment and prevention. We should suspect FH not only in individuals that have high cholesterol, but also in those that prevent, present with early-onset coronary heart disease. In this study, the prevalence of FH 
was relatively high in individuals that had a premature MI, and the prevalence increased if they also had family history, had an LDL grade that 160, or, and had a combination of this, these factors. In this study, the average LDL of these patients were, was 180 milligrams per DL, but only half of these individuals were on statin therapy prior to the MI, and only half of the patients were discharged on a high-intensity statin. When should we suspect or make a clinical diagnosis of FH? Well, there are different clinical criteria, the Dutch Lipid Clinic Network, the Simon Broom, and the MedPed, but essentially they um, try to ascertain the following features in an individual. How high is the plasma LDL? Is there a personal history of ASCVD or a family history of ASCVD? Is there family history of hypercholesterolemia? Are there physical signs of xanthomata or arcosinolis in the eyes? And then uncommonly, there may be a positive genetic test because genetic testing is not often used. How should we approach a patient in whom we suspect FH? Well, typically, we suspect FH if the LDL is greater than 190, and there is no secondary cause of uh, hypercholesterolemia, such as nephrotic syndrome, cholestatic liver disease, or um, hypothyroidism. We look for the features that increase suspicion for FH, personal history, family history, physical exam signs, and we should consider additional testing, lipoprotein A levels, we can uh, assess subclinical disease burden using CT scans. Uh, if the patient has an aortic outflow murmur, it's good to do an echocardiogram to look for aortic stenosis. And then stress testing if there are any exertional symptoms. Genetic testing should be employed, and if positive, uh, cascade testing can be facilitated. We counsel patients on diet, physical activity, and smoking cessation. The main cornerstone of therapy is high-intensity statins. And then we can add azetamide bile acid sequence, sequestrants or bempedoic acid to get LDL to goal. If you're still not at goal, then PCSK9 inhibitors can be used. Typically, we aim in the primary prevention setting to reduce the LDL cholesterol by 50% and get it down to less than 100 milligrams per DL. In the secondary prevention setting, we aim to get the LDL down to less than 70 milligrams per DL. PCSK9 inhibition is quite effective. This is uh, data for a study uh, in 482 patients with clinical or genetic FH and elevated LDL despite maximum therapy. And Clisaran is an antisense therapy towards, directed towards PCSK9, and uh, it remarkably only requires six monthly subcutaneous injections. And you can see here in this study that uh, there was a very nice 50% uh, reduction over time uh, in patients who were not at goal despite maximum therapy. In children, statins can be started at age 8 or uh, 10 years, uh, as can azitimibe or a bile acid sequestrant. Uh, the treatment goal should be uh, less than 130 milligrams per DL or a 50% reduction. There is nothing to suggest that statins affect growth, maturation, or educational levels. PCSK9 inhibitors can also be effective uh, if the patient's LDL is not at goal. And then individuals that have very severe elevation in LDL or homozygous forms of FH, lipoprotein A phoresis can be utilized. There are no prospective trials that demonstrate that statin initiation in childhood improves survival. However, this retrospective data from the Dutch investigators showed that in uh, children with FH where therapy was started early, their outlook was better than in their parents with FH in whom the statin therapy was started late. Both cardiovascular events were reduced in children with FH who started statins early, as well as death from cardiovascular causes. So in summary, FH is common but underdiagnosed and undertreated. It is associated with significantly increased risk. However, the risk can be mitigated by treatment, such as with uh, easy to obtain uh, generic therapy with statins. Cascade testing of relatives is important for early detection and treatment. We should suspect FH in those patients who present 
with CHD at an early age or who have a strong family history of hypercholesterolemia or a premature CHD, there are very exciting new therapeutic options available, monoclonal antibodies, antisense therapy, gene transfer, as well as gene editing. Thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me at my email address.